the beginning of 2020 was already not so good for most of us, as the COVID-19 pandemic had already brought the world to a standstill, and as if that was not enough, Lebanon was yet to face another devastation that would shake the country to its core. Yes, I am talking about the Beirut blast of August 4, 2020. The incident crippled the nation, caused mass destruction, and changed many people's lives forever. So, what caused that explosion? Why it happened? What are the factors that led to that fateful day? And what was the aftermath? We are all gonna cover it in this video. Lebanon is an upper-middle-income country located beside the Mediterranean Sea. The port of Beirut is one of the largest ports in the region and acts as the main principal hub for imports and export not only for Lebanon but also for the eastern Mediterranean region including Syria, Jordan, Iraq, and the Persian Gulf states. It connects with Europe, East Asia, and Africa. The port boasts an area of 1.2 square kilometers with terminals for passengers, general cargo, and containers, and 12 warehouses and in addition to these also has grain silos that contained a whopping 85% of the country's grains mainly imported from Eastern Europe in large vessels. The port used to drive two-thirds of the country's annual revenue and import goods needed to satisfy local needs. Before the explosion, Lebanon's economy was already in a crisis and the government had defaulted on debt, the Lebanese pound plunged and the poverty rate rose past 50%. The fuel for the explosion was more than 2,750 metric tons of ammonium nitrate stored in the port hangars. The chemical compound with the formula NH4NO3 is predominantly used in agriculture as a high nitrogen fertilizer but is also used for mining and construction projects. Solid ammonium nitrate is a crystalline substance that undergoes explosive decomposition when heated in a confined space. The chemical reportedly arrived in Beirut in a Russian-owned cargo ship named MV Rossus when it experienced some mechanical problems at the sea. The shipment was unloaded in the port hangars during its repair works. The deadly ammonium nitrate was ordered by an African explosive manufacturing company for mining. While the ship was docked at the port, the company went bankrupt, and the shipping company doesn't have the necessary funds to haul back the cargo. The ship too accumulated $100,000 as port fees and fines for refusing cargo. As a result, the deadly cargo was eventually abandoned along with the ship at the port. The cargo was sitting by the port inside the hangar since 2014. Lebanese customs officials requested its disposal on several occasions but no necessary action was taken by the higher authorities. On Tuesday, August 4 of 2020 around 5.50 p.m. port authorities informed the Beirut Fire Department of an uncontrolled fire that erupted at a fireworks warehouse in Hangar 12. Ten firefighter personnel including a paramedic arrived at the zone. However, they failed to contain and extinguish the fierce fire. The fire soon spread to the warehouse containing the deadly amount of ammonium nitrate. At 6.07 p.m. the fire caused the first blast at the warehouse. Only 30 to 40 seconds later the second blast fueled by 2.7 kilotons of the deadly ammonium nitrate blew up which was previously engulfed by the fire caused by the fireworks. The blast created by the explosion was the largest peacetime urban explosion of all time after the Hiroshima and Nagasaki nuclear bombings at the end of World War II. This are the pictures of the blast going off frame by frame. A sudden bright blinding flash of light. Followed by the glowing fireball explosion and then, forming a giant reddish-orange mushroom cloud. Along with that instant vaporization of surrounding air molecules and then, moments before the blast about to hit the buildings and transmission of the deadly shockwave. A study of seismic signatures of the explosion by the Federal Institute for Geosciences and Natural Resources in Germany produced a yield estimate between 0.5 and 1.1 kilotons of TNT. The explosion created a red-orange smoke surrounded by a white mushroom pressure cloud. Along with it, it also generated heat and shock waves that traveled at supersonic speed. The blast was so powerful that it was felt in Turkey, Jordan, Palestine, Syria, and Israel and was heard as far as Cyprus 240 kilometers away in the Mediterranean Sea. The government formed an investigative committee, which announced it would submit its findings to the Council of Ministers of Lebanon by 11th of August. The committee comprised the Justice Interior, and Defense Ministers, and the head of the top four security agencies, the Armed Forces, General Security, Internal Security Forces, and State Security. The investigation was to examine whether the explosion was an accident or due to negligence and if it was caused by a bomb or another external interference. The council placed 16 Beirut port officials who had overseen storage and security since 2014 under house arrest, overseen by the army, pending the investigation into the explosions. 
After a thorough interrogation and evidence found in accordance with it, a Lebanon judge ordered the arrest of 25 accused related to the blast, this includes the general manager of the port, Hassan Karaidam, and the former director general of Lebanon's Customs Authority, Shafiq Mary, the incumbent director general of Lebanon's Customs Authority, Badri Da'er, who was also arrested. The resulting blast overturned cars stripped steel structures off their cladding as well as created a crater 140 meters wide with 43 meters deep and registered a 3.3 magnitude earthquake on the Richter scale. The supersonic shockwave demolished most urban neighborhoods surrounding the port and shattered the windows up to 11 kilometers from the blast epicenter. The concrete grain silos are mostly destroyed leaving the country with just a month's worth of grain in reserve. The explosion also heavily damaged nearly 50,000 residential houses, 178 schools, 8 hospitals, and a children's specialized hospital. Overall 218 people lost their lives out of which 22 were foreigners. Over 7,000 people have been injured out of which 150 people became permanently disabled. Around 300,000 people were left homeless. The total damage directly incurred by the blast is about $18 billion. It has been past two years now since the blast, people are still struggling to return to their prior conditions after the incident. Off about 300,000 people displaced due to blast damage, only approximately 50% of the people in the devastated area have returned to their homes, either because the necessary work was not done to allow them to safely return, or because they remain too traumatized by the experience to go back. Buyar Haja Lebanon country director said, two years after the Beirut blast, Lebanon, which has been experiencing the most serious socio-economic crisis in its history since autumn 2019, continues its downfall. A middle-income country before 2019, Lebanon, whose currency lost 99% of its value in three years, has now become a place where more than two-thirds of the population is poor. According to a study published by UNESCO last year, 80% of the Lebanese population lives below the poverty line. This year, Lebanon was also hit hard by the war in Ukraine, whether in terms of its wheat reserves or with the increase in oil prices. Very weak in its agriculture sector, the country relies 66% on wheat imported from Ukraine and 12% on wheat from Russia for bread and other bakery products. Moreover, with the Beirut blast and the partial destruction of silos in the city's port in August 2020, it has become difficult to store seeds. Regarding the surge in oil prices, the Lebanese have to live with two hours of electricity per day provided by the government for many months, relying mainly on generators powered by fuel oil, for lighting. For many, buying a bag of bread, filling the car tank with fuel, or having electricity has become a luxury. May this second commemoration of the Beirut blast gives courage and strength to the Lebanese communities to restore a better environment for the future of Lebanon, where everyone can afford their basic necessities. Two years after the blast, much remains to be done whether in terms of the reconstruction of the city or in terms of the support that should be provided to the impoverished population.